I'm going to critique this property. So if you decide to buy, design, build a property yourself, you will make the same mistakes. I'm Arvin Haddad. I'm the How to Buy Mansion guy. I consult internationally. Let's get the show started. Malibu. Well, <laughs> let's stop right there. It is technically Malibu, but it's like not even in Los Angeles County, okay? It's very far Malibu. Few people in the world get the opportunity to see inside of this exclusive collection of homes. And today, you are one of them. You know, Ennis is one of the very few people in the world that can show you a commercial and make you feel like you're lucky to watch it. And I'm saying this as a compliment. We just finished touring this $58 million Malibu Modern Mansion, and it is unlike anything we have ever seen before. Well, if you squint your eyes and watch Tomb Raider, you might see some part of this property because it's all over the place. Check this out. We toured a lot of homes in Malibu, but we've never seen anything quite like this. An incredible selection of stone walls throughout. An insane interior courtyard with a waterfall. I've never seen a home with a central courtyard like this before. This place is so amazing that the listing agent had to come out and watch us shoot this episode. Ennis, welcome What's home. Up? Brandon, oh my God, this is going to be a fun episode, guys. Are you supposed to be in school? So much to talk about. The house was all done by a feng shui master. This is tropical modern zen with the most insane views. It honestly makes my head explode. It makes me sick. Gourmet kitchens, Dolby Atmos Theater. You got the waves with all the surfers. Look at that surfer right there. <laughs> the surfer doesn't come with the house. Okay, let's make that clear. Let's check out this house. On the street level, we have the gates opening up to the driveway with this blue stone and turf pattern. And this curved driveway brings you to the entry of this home. Property looks stunning. Landscaping looks incredible. Okay, approach very, very good. You got the private driveway. You've got a parking space on the bottom here, outdoor parking, you have indoor parking too, and then you have parking above the parking garage. That's pretty good. If you're having a lot of people over, that's gonna come handy. So far, so good. Now, I wanna bring everybody's attention here to the estate. Architecture of this home is so amazing. We have this cantilevered section above me. That is the second floor balcony facing the front of the home. Underneath this cantilever section, we have this unique lighting installation. What is this? This is like if you were like throwing a party in the jungle. Who the hell puts LED lights like this? Like the stars in the wood? It doesn't make any sense. Blue stone walkway transitions into a glass bridge. And then we have the glass pivot door taking you to the entry. Two water features. And within the water features, we also have fire features. Can you spot the flaw? I sometimes pause the frame so my subscribers can get good at spotting flaws in a property because it is a muscle you have to exercise to get good at it. I'll give you guys three seconds. Three, two, one. It's like information design overload. Look at this. We got fake grass. We got water. We got fire. We got a glass bridge. And then we got part of the set from Tomb Raider. Then we got two statues from Easter Island. We got a wood ceiling with disco LED lights in it. It's like going to Jack in the Box at 2.30 in the morning and like getting the 99 cents tacos, a jumbo jack, and then like stuffing seven piece jalapeno poppers in your nose. It's just like, ah, just coming out. This is like not elegant. Who is the target buyer? This is so far out in Malibu, you're attracting, you know, buyers from Oxnard. So you're expecting a Oxnard bachelor party animal to have 30 or $50 million to come purchase this property who would like this style. Now, let's continue. We have the glass bridge here and the glass pivot door takes us to the entry of this home. Okay, this is one of my favorite parts of the property. When you walk in, you have this grand foyer. You just don't jump into the middle of the living room. Great scale, there's great volume, and then there's a courtyard that frames the ocean view in the back. I think it's executed really, really well. This is the bridge that takes you to the guest wing, which is on the right-hand side. And on the second floor, we have these dragon onyx slabs that are all book matched. Now you're thinking, did I take some acid with my coffee this morning? <laughs> no, it's just really trippy. We'll talk about it later. I want to talk about the specs of this property. We have six bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, approximately 17,000 square feet of interior space. Again, house was recently completed. It's on a one acre gated lot on the market for $58,808,000. Okay, the property did not sell for that price. It stayed on the market for a very long time and then it ended up selling at auction 
for $28 million. But the craziest part is that the person who bought it maybe had like second thoughts or thought he got a really, really great bargain, which he didn't, and then put it back on the market for like 37 or something. Now it's on the market for like 33 or $34 million. And it's been on the market for almost a year and it still hasn't sold. And the new owner didn't change a single thing about it and is expecting to sell it for more than he bought it for. Now you're thinking, Arvin, they didn't reach out to consult with you? No, they didn't. But I'm going to basically tell you guys exactly what I would do with this property to be able to sell it so you can learn from it. The central courtyard brings so much natural light to the first floor of this home. Then you have a koi pond right in the center. Motorized sliding glass doors, amazing indoor outdoor continuity. I love central courtyards, but this is just way too busy, way too many different vegetations. It just doesn't come classy at all. The developer is just trying to do too much, right? It's trying too hard. What's your theme? Are you tropical? Are you Buddha? Are you Zen? Or are you party? Like you're trying to do way too many things at the same time and it's not working. What I would have done over here, I would have put four or six olive trees, build a bridge instead of that really, really dangerous walkway because every mother who would show this property to a family, which is the biggest and the wealthiest demographics who can actually buy this property, would freak the hell out if they would see these like crazy floating stairs by the pond, right? And then I would take out all these Buddha stuff and just go with a more elegant, classy vibe. The central courtyard brings so much natural light to the first floor of this home. Then you have a koi pond right in the center. Do you see how dangerous those floating steps look to a family? And the, you know, the gardening and the landscaping looks like a freaking timeshare in Belize, like some third world country. It just does not give luxury vibes whatsoever. And this koi pond actually continues to the side of the property where you have a dedicated walkway. This is really important and this is really good and much needed. If you're having a party, a lot of times, let's say it's a school event or a fundraiser or something, you don't want people to go through your property to get to the backyard. But again, I would be so worried for liability over here because in five, 10 years of ownership, you're almost guaranteed for someone to fall and hurt themselves. And that's just not good. Back to the entry, travertine floors, ton of natural light coming in, vertical oak wood slats. And then we have this hallway taking us to the kitchen and some of the other common areas. Now. We have this concealed door here opening up to the four car garage that is attached to the home. Not bad. Again, four cars, two tandem, but it's okay. Considering how many parkings you have outside, you're fine. Then on this side, we have the samurai armor. And on the back, we have these reflective panels. On top, we have a backlit onyx stone. And if you look at this art installation from a certain angle, you can see the reflection of Buddha, which is on this side. It's a blue stone carving. And it's crazy how they positioned the column here and this opening perfectly. And then they place this samurai armor here. Pretty cool. Seems like some kind of statement for war and peace right there. I don't know. Good call by Mikey. This is all I would keep. Like it needs to be an accent, right? Like you can have something like this in the property to give it a little bit of an accent. Have one statue of Buddha. Okay. Go for it. Totally fine. But when you make it a theme, you just make it childish. You just make it, you know, take the oomph out of the property. So hallway, travertine floors. Again, we have oak wood slats. There's a small seating area on my left hand side, but first. Okay, pay attention to the layout. Okay, how each room is separated from each other because I think the property has an excellent layout. I want to take everybody here, kitchen, formal dining area, but let's go straight to the living room. Makes me feel like I was, you know, bit by a venomous snake. It's just very out there kind of with a 1970s touch. But to be honest, like this is actually one of my favorite rooms in it. Like I wouldn't mind to give a theme to a room like this. What really bothers me is the fact that you don't really have a chandelier and you've made your freaking family room look like a VIP area at a nightclub. You need to give it a little bit of a character. This is just trying to do too much. Over here, what I would do is certainly put a very modern, beautiful chandelier to give it a little bit more sophistication, but in a clean, modern way. As far as the furniture, I, you know, I can't care less for it. But again, I wouldn't go and change the onyx around here. I think it's just fine the way it is right now. Then on the walls, we have these onyx slabs that are backlit. And again, I'm sure this room is going to look incredible at night. Okay, if I was the owner of this property, I would pretend these lights behind the onyx don't exist. And if someone has seen the video and they come and ask me like, what lights? 
You know, what are you talking about? There's nothing. It just cheaps it out to a different level. It looks like a freaking nightclub with a theme of hookah and aquarium and jungle and beach. It's just all over the place. Right behind Mikey, we have motorized sliding glass doors opening up to these breathtaking views. You have your 95 foot infinity edge pool. Okay, this is actually one of the things that I really like about the property. The combination of backyard and swimming pool. You have enough lawn and you have a huge pool and it backs up to the beach. Now, you're not going to get much light for, you know, at nighttime. The view is going to be pitch black at nighttime. But there's another big, big issue with this location, which we're going to cover in a few minutes. But again, backyard is pretty damn strong. So around Ennis, all these walls are backlit, which you said. But... At this house at night, it's especially insane. It's especially crazy. <laughs> Did you hear this? Mikey is impressed, okay? But Mikey is not your buyer pool for a property like this, right? You're attracting the wrong demographic to the property. You're not going to find a freaking bachelor who lives in Oxnard or even in Los Angeles who would want to drive all the way over here to this side of Malibu to party in a jungle hookah lounge aquarium themed beach house. It's just such a niche, niche product. He really lit up the space through these backlit stone walls. <laughs> and that's pretty much majority of your lighting at night. Yeah. And that's why this property has such a unique feel. So you have to turn on the freaking LEDs behind the onyx. You have no choice. Oh my God. You need to add more light. Now let's take everybody to the formal dining room. Beautiful table set up seating for 16. Okay, I love this dining room. I think it's well positioned. It's right next to the kitchen, opens up on both sides to the courtyard and the backyard next to the living room. Beautiful. But again, you know, the back partition with the plants is just too busy. All you needed was one plant. Just keep it a little classy. Keep it a little bit sophisticated, right? When you throw so many different plants at it, it takes the oomph out of that one that could do the trick. Suede leather chairs. Table is solid wood with this epoxy finish, cutlery, details, accessories. Room looks very exquisite. Exquisite, it does not. It looks like a rum jungle nightclub at Mandalay Bay, if you guys remember. It's just, it's, it's too much, I'm sorry. You have all these incredible finishes. You have a plant wall behind you. You're looking through an aquarium where you have the living room on the other side with a the fireplace. Then you have the Pacific Ocean here. Overwhelming. Not, like, not to mention, like, you're probably going to be having dinner at night. I don't want to overkill the night <laughs> thing, but... Do you hear how Mikey's excited for it? And if you are too, if you're like, oh, Arvin, I don't know what you're talking about. I really like the backlit onyx. My friend, with all due respect, most probably you can't afford it either. It's just a fact, right? If you want to actually develop a property to sell it, if I was consulting the developer, I would say, who's your target market? It's fine if you want to do a bachelor house in Las Vegas or Miami and you want to go with this theme. Yeah, there's the demographic for it. Not in Malibu. And first floor, entire first floor has radiant heating. And on the second floor, I believe they have in-floor heating for the bathrooms. Now, before we go toward the kitchen, I actually want to take everybody this way. This is the first staircase that takes you up to the second floor of this home. Much better. You see how like this looks more natural. Again, they've kind of maybe picked two or three plants. They all kind of have the same form and shape. They're all dripping down, more consistent. And these living walls have their own irrigation system as well. Super cool. Now, I want to take everybody to the lounge, U-shaped sectional couch. Okay. Great space. Again, perfect pocket to put your like, you know, home theater or, you know, movie area, but it's washed out. It's all the same color. This might be one place you could use a backlit onyx to give an ambience. I don't see the pop here. This is where you could have had a pop. See, you see what I'm saying? Like, this is now where we are super, super Zen. We're like, you know, a Buddhist and, you know, Japanese monks. Like, what happened to the jungle theme, right? Like, you just left it there. You got to stay consistent with something and then give one tiny little, you know, pop of something excitement to keep it, you know, interesting. That's it. Nothing more. You have the ottoman and on top, they drop this stone fabricated coffee table. It creates a beautiful contrast. You have your projector on the other side, built-in speaker, wood clad ceilings and walls. And on this side, we have a beautiful... It looks like a sauna, right? <laughs> it looks like a dry sauna, a huge dry sauna. You put a TV room in there. And the drawer fronts have this fluted finish. 
and I've never seen this finish before till this house. In fact, developer showed me this morning. Mikey, can we get a close up? You can see how it's so smoothly curved between each gap. I don't like the wood used on these cabinets. It, it just looks worn out already for some reason and not in a nice, like rustic way. Let's go back to the hallway again. On my left hand side, we have the elevator. This concealed door opens up to a beautiful powder room, same oak slats. Can you see the light bulbs behind the freaking onyx? It's just so cheap, so, so cheap. Welcome to the kitchen. I can honestly say this does not look like a kitchen. This looks like a bar to me. This totally does not look like a kitchen. I've never seen a minimalist kitchen design like this before. I mean, where do I begin? The stone fabrication here with the islands. Then you have the main cabinetry behind me with the fluted finish. Do you see the overuse of the same material? I am for it. Like you don't have to introduce 20 different material, but when you pick a very busy pattern like this onyx with the green and you know reddish lines in it and it's super super busy first of all it ages really fast and then it just becomes too much it just becomes overwhelming and i really don't like this like pattern it was like sway and like you put your hand through it there are different strokes to it again cheap it, it's not classy it's not timeless it would look weird it would age not cool and within the cabinetry there's also these design elements and the pattern here mike i don't know if you can see it it's so minimalist but at the same time you have so many different color variations and veins with the stones where's the stove where's like all the stuff this looks like a sitting arrangement at a bar and i don't know how the developer here managed to solve this problem but even within the cabinetry you have backlighting oh my god oh my you know, I want you to tap your wife and ask her, babe, is this your dream kitchen? She would say, you're still not over partying. You're still not over nightclubs and partying. Get over that. I assume these are refrigerators next to us, right? I see. You knew that was there. Let's be real. Yeah, of course I did. Uh, <laughs> this is where we have the wine fridge. I just wanted to show you. You said, let's see. Uh, so. Well, I was just excited to show it to everyone. And again, you have all the panel cabinetry here, fridge, freezer on this side. Before we continue, I want to actually take everybody this way. This is where we have the chef's kitchen. Why does it look like Batman cave? Like you just went black. I know most people won't come over here, but just black, like, come on. Now, more built-in appliances, all gagging now. Then we have additional base cabinetry here, gas burner, induction that's super small for a size this house i know we have a chef's kitchen but this is literally a weekend home most people don't live over here this is not close to any offices by an hour drive right so this is a weekend home part of a family getting together is cooking together and bringing everyone together to the kitchen and sometimes you don't want your mate to be cooking you want to be cooking this is it this is like my dormitory had better cooking system than this i mean it wasn't like high end but we had more cooktops than this all right Let's take everybody outside. Welcome to the backyard. Okay, did you guys spot the other flaw? If you pay attention during the entire video, they were playing kind of a mellow background music. Do you know why? Because this property backs up to the PCH, the main, main artery in Malibu, where it connects Oxnard all the way to Los Angeles. So you're gonna hear cars passing and it just kills the freaking vibe. This is a major flaw for a weekend home. You want that zen, you want that experience where you're isolated and you know quiet. And this is the first outdoor seating area. Next to that, we have a built-in bar setup that is attached to the wall, and that section also lights up at night. Look at this backyard, it's amazing. To get this much swimming pool, this much backyard grass, and get dining table, sitting arrangement is one of the major strengths of this property. And this is why I want to show you guys a bird eye view of the property. Look how beautifully this property sits on a lot. To be able to fit, what, 17,000 square foot on a one acre lot and be able to give it a proper private driveway, frontage, a courtyard, and then a huge backyard is pretty damn good. I mean, and the layout itself works brilliantly. Multiple staircases to go upstairs, great distribution of the bedroom. It has excellent bones. Let's talk about this 95 foot infinity edge pool, 20 feet wide, all mosaic clad. We have the hot tub here, swim up bar on this side with a beer tap, another sink, TV on this side. And the pool house comes with a full bathroom. This is clutch. If you're throwing events, you need to have a bathroom 
in the backyard otherwise everyone would try to go inside so that whole point of the side walkway where i said your guests could come without going inside would be pointless so well thought out then we have the turf section right in the center motorized sliding glass doors open up formal dining room and the living room area great indoor outdoor flow again remember you have the internal courtyard too so it's like each side you go, you're on the outside, you feel the vibe, energy, you still got to hear the cars pass by, but overall, very good design. It's always so fun to come to Malibu. It makes me question my life. Mikey and I live quite into the city, meaning it takes us almost an hour to go to the beach. So I can't imagine living in a property like this and being able to just walk to the beach. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, there's uh, all these surfers out there, like Anna said. The waves are actually pretty big today. Yes. It's been about a decade since I surfed. Those palm trees are just not doing well. Like, they look like, you know, a seven-year-old man, the last few hairs he's got on the top is just falling down. It's, I'm, not, I'm not really optimistic about those palm trees there. All right, let's continue. Lounging chairs. I like this umbrella with a stone base. It has a single column, it just looks very elegant and matches the house well. And then, it's not in the center of the pool, but on this side we have the sunken seating area. Okay, I think this would actually get used, right? I like how it's flush with the water. Uh, it's again, very central to the rest of the house. Cool design, uh, I think it's cool. I mean, you didn't take too much from the swimming pool because the swimming pool is huge. In a well-executed backyard. Now, I wanna talk about the house for a second. It's a beautiful modern design. These two cantilevered sections are your primary bedroom balconies. This house actually has two primary bedrooms. We have the first one on this wing, second one on the other side. And this section right here with these massive glass panes are your primary bathrooms. I hope they will like, you know, uh, frost the glass because otherwise you better be an exhibitionist because you totally can see the bathroom from here. And on top of that developer here when the extra length and he made the roof concrete as well. Then he also installed 180 solar panels. Look at the lot utilization. Do you see this? This is what I was telling you guys. The side setbacks is really close to the neighbors. That's a negative, right? But the backyard is a pretty decent side. You have a central courtyard and you get the frontage very well. You can actually operate up to 80% of this home on the solar panels. I love the fact that it has solar panels. I mean, for a house like this, when you think about it, the cost, right, over the 20, 30 years, it's going to use a lot of electricity and, and why not get it for free after the initial investment, which you're getting financing on, right? We've heard of people building homes like this in really hurricane or storm prone regions Correct. like Florida, but Malibu, like maybe you don't need to <laughs> maybe like twice a year you get a thunderstorm or three times a year, you know, it's got to be three to four times more expensive than traditional framing. I don't know about that. I really don't know about three or four times more expensive. There's always with developers who are doing a flip. It's either the city code, some sort of element that with the city code that you have to follow, or there's some sort of a cost saving where they know the contractor. There's like maybe some automation about it, that industrial engineering, like the way you format, how fast you can pour some sort of a reason where it normally helps a developer to go with this method because maybe it moves the project faster, you pay less on hard money loans they have. There's always financial reasons for developers who make these choices. We have additional motorized sliding glass doors here opening up to the bar area. You see, like there's a beautiful bar set up over here for you. By the way, have you guys been paying attention to the scale of the rooms, the proportions? It's excellent. Like the ceiling height to the width, just the perfect dimensions of rooms. I really like that about this house. See Seating areas on this side, complemented with a fireplace, again, onyx wall. And by the way, all the furniture is included with the sale of this home. Yeah, now the property is like on the market exactly looking the same. The new owner thinks like someone's gonna come back and say, oh, you know, I'm gonna pay you more than what you paid for it a year ago. And the market is worse than it is today. Like you have to change something about the property. What are you thinking? And this is your bar, again, fluted cabinetry, TV is nicely recessed in. They even fluted the stone that's around the TV. That's a pretty weak set of bottles, dude. Like, come on, Bombay. <laughs> come on. Beautiful space. Now, let's continue. On this side, we have the entertainment room. I want to first talk about this acrylic piano. Please don't. Okay, I like to have a game room. This is really good. There's a poker set over there. There's a pool table over here. There's a piano over here. This door opens up to a full bathroom beautiful marble floors that are book matched and the same marble is also used for the walk-in shower 
Then it is around the corner and we have an exterior door here, meaning this full bathroom also works as your pool bathroom since we have that connecting walkway here. Great. So if you have events, you have two bathrooms where you can service, you know, a large group of people. This is a good, so far so good. Now let's go back to the hallway. These double doors open up to the movie theater. We have a small bar area here. Again, backlit onyx, fridge, sink, your popcorn and candy station. And we have this curtain opening up to the movie theater. I mean, I wasn't expecting a movie theater and it's great that it has it, but what I was really expecting was a spa. I mean, you have a courtyard in the middle, right? You have this Zen thing you're going with. You've put Buddhas and like freaking sunrise and you know, hookah lounges, everything. Where is your freaking spa? Wellness is one of the like top, top things people expect in this price bracket and you didn't execute it. How these different materials work together to create this unique ambiance here is so fascinating to me. I mean, where do I begin? You have backlit onyx. This is just, you know, this summarizes the whole house in one. You've got green, black, white, and white onyx, and then, you know, zebra looking, you know, carpet at the bottom. What the hell is the theme, right? Too much. And lastly, we have this unique carpet and somehow it all works together and creates this unique experience. And I want to say something about this carpet. This carpet was custom done for this room. Dude, this is horrible. I can't wait for it to get really dirty. The guy who painted this house in the UK, you know the house I'm talking yeah, about, right? Yeah, I've seen this guy going viral on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, he painted his car, his clothes, his house. Everything in doodles more or less yeah yeah it's pretty impressive yeah because your clientele who wants to buy a 30 million dollar house wants their house to look like mr doodles we're done on the first floor now let's go check out the second floor you develop homes so you know how much work that goes into building uh, a property like this uh, but there's obviously the finishes and the details of this home mm. and there's the whole concrete structure icf rebar reinforced it's fascinating to me that this developer took the time, had the resilience to go over for years to build it, design it, curate it, and put it all together. Uh, that's what every developer does. <laughs> it's not, no, yes, he didn't stop halfway. <laughs> he finished the house, yes. It honestly makes my head explode. It makes me sick. Thinking about to it. Think about this. That he finished the house? Are you serious? Like, what, you want a cookie? Come on, you have to finish the house. It is so much money on the line. There's so much passion. MKH Developments, they did such a spectacular job and they went so far and beyond. Yeah, that's why it didn't sell and it had to go in auction, right? <laughs> and you will never see a home custom curated like this on this show. Well, that's for very good reasons that we covered in this video. It really is a one of a kind. And I know we say that with every house, but this is it. <laughs> On this one. All right, everyone, let's go check out the second floor of this home. This is the living wall that we saw earlier, skylight above. Okay, that's a kind of tight for your main staircase coming upstairs. You would ideally want two people comfortably come up, but I'm liking the landing area. Like, I'm getting good vibes over here. It seems like they've kind of let go of the onyx on this floor, which, which is kind of refreshing. So far, so good. And I want to first show everyone the screening room that we have on this level. Do you see what I'm saying? Like you have three screening rooms in this house. Like, I don't think the movie theater was necessary. You have an upstairs landing area, beautiful setup for watching movies with your family on the second floor. You have another seating area downstairs. You should have given us the spa. You didn't give us a spa, man. Overall, I like the landing here because you have massive glass panes looking down to your courtyard. I'm sure with all the outdoor lighting, plants, everything, this space will look even better in the next few hours. Now, let's continue our tour. We have a full bathroom here for the gym. Way too busy of a marble. What the hell happened here? It's like, you know, a chessboard took a drop of acid or something. <laughs> Come on, what's going on? Marble that they use for this bathroom looks stunning. I mean, look at all the character, veins and details. It looks like somebody puked on it. It's horrible. Why does it have these green spots? And then you have the shower in the center. It actually goes to the other side. I'm sorry. 
It's just bad. Spacious bathroom for the gym, which is located on the side. Sliding glass doors open up. It connects to the same balcony that I just mentioned. Treadmill, tonal is attached to the wall. Spacious, gets great light. Moving on. Now, right next to the bathroom that we just toured, we have the first laundry room, washer, dryer. Okay, good. You definitely need a laundry room upstairs. I was really expecting two sets of washer and dryer, but it's fine. It's okay. I wanna take everybody back to the landing. Again, massive glass panes looking down to the courtyard. Coming here, this is the walkway that we mentioned at the entry of this home, glass railing, floor to ceiling glass windows. This looks like a Persian look, like a Tabriz, you know? I think it's good, like one wall, right? Like the fact that you take it all the way and, you know, just make it such a huge statement out of it, it just cheapens that one, right? That like one is way more powerful. When you put four of it, make a whole wall out of it, it just cheaps it. It's like as if it's abundant, right? Like it should feel like unique. Look at the dragon onyx that we have here. And I'm sure in a few hours with backlighting. Oh my this God. Section. You can even see the lines. Like you can see the, you know, the wood frames that is holding it. Please just pretend those lights don't exist. All right, Mikey, I want to show this detail real quick to everyone. We have a pocket door here because you can close off this section as your guest quarters. We have a few bedrooms here. Whoa, I just totally missed that. There's no secondary bedroom on the lower level. Meaning if you're having guests over, they're going to be sleeping in the same quarters as you are. And typically, in my experience, you normally want the for the privacy of them and the for the privacy of yourself to have the guest room on a different floor. And again, I don't think this you know door is going to cut it because it's probably going to be right next to the kid's bedroom. Coming in, I want to show everyone the bedrooms first. We have the first one here, super cozy, comes with a king size bed wood tones see as excessive they were with all the you know material in the lower floor every room over here looks like a sauna wood floors wood walls wood like who who was the designer here when it got to the second floor it's like we got no materials <laughs> we just got natural wood stack it up baby glue it on room has a very warm feel to it and i feel like color of the bed just makes it a little bit more suiting that's the only pop -up. your bed is your pop color now this is a Jack and Jill setup, meaning there's a bathroom here shared by these two bedrooms. And that's why we have two vanities here. What is this? Are we on an airplane? Why is it so tight? Like your butt's going to be hitting each other. This is way too tight for a mansion this size. It's really tight. And that marble, oh my God, that came out in like 2008 when the real estate bubble burst. Like that's old. That's an old design. That's why we have two vanities here. Again, look at the marble, look at the finishes, details. So bespoke. Like just, what is the finish on these walls? Like they just like took some pieces of wood from Home Depot. Like it just looks not finished. And I know they're going with the rustic look, but I'm not getting the rustic look. It's like they forgot to put drywall. It's not working for me. You know what this house weirdly reminds me of? What? Monitor's Rest, the most expensive house oh, in Utah. Oh wow. I have a video on this one. This was one of my first videos I've ever done. It's really, really funny. That's a funny video. You guys should check it out. I feel like that house had also unique furniture and yeah. details and yeah, it was like all custom. custom cabinetry, ca uh, custom wall paneling. I feel like this house is kind of like that. Each room has a design on its own. All the rooms look the same. What are you talking about? They put a different color bed in them. The rooms look the same. Now I want to take everybody here, take this hallway stacked washer and dryer sink set up here additional cabinetry and this door opens up to the common area for the guest house what i mean by common area oh it actually has a guest house okay that's cool it's kind of weird that the guest house is on the same floor as the primary and the kids bedroom but look the way it's actually separated then it works as long as you have an access going down without using the stairs from here then i wouldn't mind it so much yes. It has an outdoor staircase that comes up from the entry of this home to this level. And since you have that pocket door where you can seal it off from the rest of the house, you can use this as an office. This is actually cool. I mean, because you have that internal courtyard, it actually provides the right amount of separation where I think it would work. For some reason, I really like this gas range they have right here. Uh, oh, I thought you were talking about the view. <laughs> no, something about this gas range, like when we see smaller ones, typically they just, they're not 
they don't feel customized or anything this this has a cool look to it wow uh yeah it's it fits the space actually i think the, this looks like a kitchen to me then the you know kitchen of the main house that did not look like a kitchen not so bad we have three bedrooms here two primary bedrooms and this bedroom on this side let's go have a quick look pivot door opens up king size bed i really like this padded back wall what is this it just so doesn't go the padded back wall fabric next to kind of an unfinished looking wood and then the see-through glass closets oh my god like do you know how much money i could have saved this person like when they were building this house I, I it's not a plug like i feel bad like i really really feel bad the funny thing is nobody tells them nobody tells them a lot of times people think oh because he has a lot of money like they would you know they know what they're doing but they don't they really really don't and most people don't want to offend them or you, you know don't want to be rude and no one really tells them and the agent is just wants the listing at the end so there's never that third party to like really honestly help the person make the right decisions and just say it how it is back to the hallway so we can check out the first primary bedroom suite by the way we have the elevator landing here <laughs> this could have been a good place of using an accent wall but like it's just such a random hodgepodge right like there's no like creative director behind the project to be like what is the theme who's the target buyer how could you go from one floor to the other floor with such a big mismatch of what's going on no come on in first let's show this side to everyone they have a really nice coffee bar here with a fridge sink and then i want to show everyone the bedroom which is incredible fireplace backlit stone textures here king size bed look at the back paneling behind <laughs> i feel like i'm in downtown la buying some fabric not a bad size bedroom okay the design is just horrible all these random fabrics next to onyx and then again it looks like plywood in the background but i love the fact that how the bedrooms on this kind of a square shape how every one of these rooms gets a patio to the back and separation from each other it's again the bones are really good i really like and i don't know even the second floor has great ceiling heights the proportion of the rooms are excellent it just the finishes are just horrendous with all these different fabrics and designs and i gotta show this detail to you mike ready don't turn it on please don't turn on the onyx NS. instead of bedside table lights mm -hmm. oh wow <laughs> i should have guessed that based on all the other stone in this house yes but like only 20 year old 30 year olds would get excited over this <laughs> look at this bedroom here mikey this is phenomenal you have a seating area here facing the views now i want to show everyone the bathroom for this room it's so spacious you have two sets of vanities and can we talk about the fabrication here these open shelves okay not bad you know it, it's a little bit more balanced i'll give it a six you know it's a pass here and this is the other vanity here with pretty much same finishes then you have your built-in corner tub don't tell me it lights up <laughs> don't light up the top please now it gets better comes with two water closets they're located right here and then we have the walk-in closet here the amount of closets see like i don't understand how in the design phase no one was like you know what i've never seen glass with like a plywood finish it might look a little off <laughs> if you don't see enough properties you're just not gonna see what works and what doesn't work it might look actually decent on a 3d rendering and the guy looked at it, he's like "Ooh, this looks good but like you have to actually put the material next to each other to, to kind of know if what works and what doesn't work the cabinetry and this house is staggering and look at all these glass fronts okay this is actually a pretty damn good junior primary suite i mean as far as spacing goes right like a huge walk-in closet big bathroom good room or front row ocean view very good i can only imagine how painstaking it was to build this home and then finish it out and make sure all these details are executed perfectly and it's, every house is difficult you have to build it you have to design it you have to put the structure and then finishes it's gonna take some time that's it for the first primary bedroom suite now let's go back to the hallway so we can go check out the second one another pivot door opens up to the office you have your desk built-in cabinetry even the office comes with a spacious balcony and they even have an outdoor uh, massage table there. I like the fact that the office is tucked in. A lot of times they put the office in this like really 
obnoxious part of the property where you're gonna get so much traffic and coming in, it's really smart place to put it. All right, welcome to the second primary bedroom suite. We have the walk-in closet here. I don't wanna go into too many details because owners are currently occupying the property. Let's go check out the bedroom itself. Wait a minute, it doesn't have a hair closet, that was it? Come on, you need a his and hers. You have to, this was smaller than the other one. Another king size bed. <laughs> the fabric continues. The new owner really needs to uh, redo the upstairs. You don't need to have three wood finishes right next to each other. You need to break that. You really need to bring a contrast. And the fact that the neighbor looks into the primary is not good. Again, I'm telling you those side setbacks are not ideal. Corner opens up, again, drop down screens, blackout shades, these spacious balconies that are all traveling class, seamless glass railing, and these breathtaking views. <laughs> it's the fall. It's like, it's just dead. All right, follow me so we can check out the primary bathroom or the second primary bathroom. Okay, this is the only onyx I actually like in this property and it pairs really well with the plywood. I think this one actually works over here. Welcome to the second closet. Okay, it does have a second closet. Thank God. Okay, it's much better than what I thought. Again, cabinetry with glass fronts, wood paneling, and at the end, we have this massive picture window facing these amazing views. With that, we're done on the second floor. What a difference between the second and the first floor, right? On the second floor, they use the same material on the ceiling, on the wall, and on the floors. But then on the first floor, they didn't even know what theme it was. Like they used so many different type of material and themes, right? Which really, for me, the first floor was an extension of, I hate to admit this, our American culture. It was kind of like, excessive of everything right just bring it in more is better when in true luxury in true essence simplicity is what makes a property stand out and look prestigious but not all properties in la are this bad this is my favorite property and if you want to consult with me the link is in the description otherwise i'm going to see you guys in the comments below thanks for watching